the 25. Roethlisberger pulls it back, throws, has Juju Smith-Schuster. What a start to the night. One play, bang, touchdown Steelers. The Eagles take over at the 17. Foles steps up, Foles delivers, deep one, one-on-one, -on -one. it's caught! What's going on, everybody? Justin and Kevin here with another weekly episode of the Heated Sports NFL Football Podcast. So, like I say every week, we're just going to get right into it. A um, lot of injuries happening, a lot of very um, interesting matchups happening last week, and we can preview here for week three. Um, so, let's just get into it with some of the obvious news. A lot of quarterbacks getting some pretty serious injuries after week two. Um, pretty much the biggest names, Pittsburgh quarterback Ben Roethlisberger. May he have a very speedy recovery. Um, New Orleans Saints quarterback Drew Brees out with a hand injury. Looks like about five to six weeks is what they're estimating right now. Um, Brees, I think, did have a surgery. He met with a good specialist in L.A. Apparently everything went well. So Brees is out next five to six weeks. Teddy Bridgewater at the helm there. Slash Taysom Hill. That slash Taysom Hill. Apparently uh, Bridgewater is going to be the starter, but I'm sure Taysom Hill's role won't. Well, if anything, it'll increase. Like, it's not going to decrease whatsoever. He'll still be in the lineup a lot. And um, number three, uh, the least significant of the three, in my opinion, Cam Newton is out in week three, at least for week three, with a foot injury that he sustained last Thursday night against the Buccaneers. So Cam Newton's out. Backup quarterback Kyle Allen will be starting in this place. Many thought Will Greer might get the nod, rookie quarterback out of West Virginia that they drafted. But it's going to be Kyle Allen, at least to start the game in week three. Uh, the severity of Cam Newton's injury, we're not so sure. He was kind of questionable leading up throughout the week, but he's going to be out, so it's going to be Kyle Allen, re Kyle Allen ready to go in week three. But um, I'll kind of just hand it off to you. I mean, pick one of those situations. What, what's your take on him? Any positive outlooks for, the, for any of those teams going forward this year, or is it kind of a lost cause and get ready for 2020? All right, I'm going to start off. This just popped into my head. The team so far that's probably winning this season is the Falcons. Like, look at that division. They started off 0-1. They were looking a little bit questionable, but now you have Drew Brees going down. The Saints aren't going to obviously be what they would be with Brees. You have the Panthers, who look terrible, and even without Cam Newton, are going to be worse. And the Buccaneers are, like, one of the worst teams in the NFL. I don't think anyone will argue against that. So the Falcons... They have they own that division. Yeah, I'll say they're loving it's theirs their, to lose. Yeah, they're liking their position right now. I mean, coming off a good win against Philly in Sunday on Sunday night football. Um, I mean, Matt Ryan's still a little inconsistent, but I mean, yeah, right now looking at the situation, it's not really good to root for injuries or be excited about injuries, but yeah, I mean, if you're in Atlanta's position, I mean, that going into the season, that's a very tough division. Yeah. Like, people had hopes for the Panthers this year. And then starting off 0-1. Um, yeah, New Orleans being a powerhouse in the NFC, but yeah, I mean, these significant injuries to both of those teams, like you said, no one's really counting on the Bucks to do any damage there, but, but yeah, I mean, Atlanta's definitely in a good Hawkins spot. are winning. Yeah. I mean, I like them going into the season. I think I had them like just missing yeah. the playoffs because you have the Saints in that division. I did like the Panthers a little bit going in, but did have them winning the division before the season started, but yeah, just yeah. leave that there. Yeah, we'll th throw that out there. You know, it's all good, but yeah, I mean, that's a definitely definitely a good take. Like I said though, I mean, week 1 Matt Ryan looked pretty terrible. Last week against Philly, still had a couple interceptions. Some, Leading the league right some now. Questionable, some yeah, some questionable red zone decisions. But, I mean, yeah, if Matt Ryan can just kind of get it together, get back to that MVP-like season he had a few years I'm ago. Yeah, I mean, I really wouldn't be either. I mean, I'm not going to knock on Matt Ryan. I mean, I think he's still a really, like, top-level quarterback in the league. But he needs to kind of get it together and take advantage of this opportunity. Because, like I said, Breeze is going to be back. Cam Newton is also going to be back at some point, most likely. But... Breeze is going to be back, and Bridgewater's not bad. I mean, if you're looking at backup quarterbacks in the league, I mean, I have Bridgewater kind of up there in the top tier. So um, I'm not sure what the future of their schedule looks like, but if the Saints can kind of just say it's six weeks, go they three, tough games. go three and three, some maybe four and two if they're lucky in that six game stretch with Bridgewater in there. I mean, the Saints really aren't going to go anywhere, but. Yeah, I mean, if they fall off a little bit while Breeze is out, uh, Atlanta kind of picks it up and wins maybe four or five of those six games, gets a gets a decent lead before Breeze is back. I mean, yeah, I don't I don't hate their situation at all. Yeah, let's talk about that because that's an interesting topic. The Saints with Bridgewater leading them. What do you predict for them going forward? 
Let me record look. wise. I'm gonna look up their schedule right now. They got some tough that'll... games. I know they face the Bears. They face the Cowboys. Well, dude, I'll get They're, in the I'll get into two, the Bears a little two later. Two ones right there. Mitch Trubinsky looks absolutely terrible so far this season, but they have Seattle in Seattle. That's tough. Home against Dallas, tougher. Home against Tampa Bay, at Jacksonville, at Chicago. That's one, two, three, four. Three. That's five. Three tough and, then, and then home against Arizona. So I'd say it's a three and three split. So I think Seattle's pretty tough. Dallas is tough. Um, and the Bears are kind of tough. If that offense picks it up, that, that team is tough. But right they now. Have no room for error. You're saying it's a three and three split. They have to win three games if yeah. they want to have a chance at I mean, the playoffs. I, let's put it this no way. Room I, don't, I don't think they have an issue. I mean, Tampa Bay, I'm not worried about. Jacksonville, definitely not worried about. Gardner Minshew will get into the best football guy you could have. But overall, as a team, especially if Jalen Ramsey's gone by then. Not worried about Jacksonville whatsoever. And then Arizona. I kind of like Arizona. I've given them a little hype um, throughout the season so far into the preseason. But, they're, I mean, they're not bad. They're not bad, but that game is in New Orleans. So I would probably give New Orleans the nod there pretty pretty confidently. But, but yeah, I mean, I could definitely see 3-3 three and three at the bare minimum. Maybe 4-2. and two. I could see them competing with Chicago if their offense doesn't get it picked up by then. But, yeah, at Seattle and then home against Dallas. Who Dallas looks really good right now. So I, those two games might be – might be the two that'll cause them the most problems. Yeah, so three and three for sure is what they need to have by the time Drew Brees returns. And yeah. once he does, he can, the Saints are right back where they were, a Super Bowl contender. I mean, he'll be fresh. He won't be dinged up and hurt from playing so many straight weeks. He'll effectively be playing around half the season. He'll, he should be fresh. I know he's not going to be able to practice a ton with his injury right now, but he's going to be healthy, and he's going to be Drew Brees. Yeah, but you know, so you know what matchup I guarantee they're eyeing up though right now. So after that Cardinals game, that's that's that'll be the sixth game missed, and then they get the bye week after that. So I'd say he's most likely going to be back for their next game, mm -hmm. and that next game is at home against the Atlanta Falcons. So I would definitely say most likely going to be the top two teams in that division this year. Atlanta will probably have a jump on them a little bit by the time Brees is back. That'll be a good matchup for them to kind of eye up and want Brees to be back for. Especially having that extra week for the bye week. So I'm just a little nervous. I'm not quite as confident in Teddy Bridgewater as you seem to be. Mm -hmm. so I just think Drew Brees is not only a generational quarterback, he's their leader. We saw it in the Texans game, what he pulled off there at the end. You watch the guy's pregame speeches. He's just, he's a different, he's a different type of quarterback. You yeah. don't find these guys. And Teddy Bridgewater is definitely not one of those guys. It's just, it's going to be a lot harder than I think most people are predicting for Bridgewater to lead this team. Yeah, no, he's I mean, no Drew Brees. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a transition for sure. Um, I'm gonna trend. Speaking of transitions, I'll get into kind of one of those other teams I mentioned. I mean, I'm gonna let you talk first about my Pittsburgh Steelers, but the other team that kind of took a hit, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, obviously very talented quarterback, future Hall of Famer, easily in my opinion. Easily um, goes down with an elbow injury. People thought it maybe be Tommy John surgery, which have been a little more serious. That's more of like a 12 to 14 month recovery, but it's not Tommy John surgery. But the surgery he will be getting is still going to put him on the IR, ending his se ending his 2019 season. Um, I mean, what do you take with Pittsburgh? I mean, we saw a little bit of Mason Rudolph there in like the back half of the Seattle game last week. He impressed me a little bit. I kind of liked what I saw. Still, obviously, a little bit of jitters. That's his first ever like regular season action, but. What do you think with Pittsburgh? They got Minka Fitzpatrick to beef, up, to beef up the defense a little bit, but, I mean, is this year kind of a lost cause? What do you think? Got a lot to say here. I'm just going to start off by saying I think this was a good thing for the Pittsburgh Steelers, mm -hmm. and here's why. I don't think this was their year. I doubt they would have even been able to win the AFC North. The Ravens are looking insane, and I think the Browns are going to start turning it up soon. Mm -hmm. I don't think they were winning the division, even if somehow they were the Browns and the Ravens just started being bad for some reason. They're not going to get past the Chiefs this year. They're not going to get past the Patriots. And overall, I just don't think their team was that good. I don't think they're ready um, to make a run like that again. So I think this was a blessing in the in disguise because now they have an opportunity to see what they have in Mason Rudolph. The season, in my opinion, wasn't going to be going anywhere. So mm -hmm. now they can see what they have in their former third round pick, I think he was. Yep, yeah, third, from third round pick 2018. 20, 2018, yeah. They can, they can see what he is. Um, Mason Rudolph, they can see what he's made of. He's playing pretty much the entire season. So this is a great opportunity for the Pittsburgh Steelers to see if he is the future. And then they trade for Minka Fitzpatrick, which to me didn't make any sense because they're testing out Mason Rudolph. And if things go bad and they decide to move another direction, they're more than likely drafting a quarterback in the first round next year. Mm -hmm. And they no longer have their first round pick. It's Minka Fitzpatrick. Yeah. So they're putting all their 
all their money on Mason Rudolph being the guy. Mm -hmm. That's and what I mean, it looks like to me. No, and I mean, it, it definitely looks like that to me as well. And it kind of raised some questions, or let's put it this way, it would have raised some questions if I'm kind of going like chronological order of Steelers news. So early that day, around like 11, 12 o'clock, Ben put out like a personal statement just regarding like the injury news, saying that he's very disappointed, all that good stuff, but then pretty much just assuring everybody that he's coming back like stronger than ever next season like i've done a little bit of research this surgery he should be fine heading into next season if he would want to be that's kind of the big question like oh like pretty serious elbow injury for a quarterback he's 30 he'll 38. be 38 next season will he retire call it quits he kind of put those rumors to rest right out of the gate with his statement assuring that he has two years left on his contract after this season and he's going to be back and fulfill that contract so the minka kind of signing reassures me of one of two things either that they believe in Mason Rudolph, and they believe already that he's the future of the franchise, whether Ben comes back or not, which, again, it looks like he will. Or, number two, they're fully confident that Ben will be coming back. So even if Mason Rudolph doesn't pan out this year, it doesn't look like he'll be able to take that step as a starting quarterback. They have two more years of Big Ben Roethlisberger. Two, then, one, beef up the defense with Minka Fitzpatrick, which the safety position was by far the biggest need on that defense still, in my opinion. And then they still have two more years of Ben to kind of reassess and figure out where they want to go as far as drafting a quarterback. And it's not really as much of an urgent need with Ben assuring that he's going to come back and fulfill his contract. So, again, before that news came out, I was kind of thinking the same thing. This could be a blessing in disguise. Either one, Mason Rudolph lights it up and they win some games and then he's like assuring that he's the future. Or two, he just completely bombs. They don't really win hardly any games. And then they have a top pick in the draft to take a really good quarterback. But again, with Ben kind of assuring he's going to be back into the back and fulfilling his role as the quarterback for the next two seasons, at least with his contract, then you really don't need to take a quarterback that early in the draft regardless. So Yeah, to me, I just I believe that this next upcoming draft would be the time for the Steelers to find Big Ben's successor. But yeah, if you're confident in Big Ben, I'm sure Steelers fans are too, then that is good. Uh, mm -hmm. It's another option they can take just having him for another two years. But it just surprised me mm -hmm. how they went out and traded their first round pick with so many unknowns no. going into the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, this is the first time in 50 plus years that Pittsburgh's gotten rid of a first round pick and like not used it in the draft. So it's very unsteeler like, but Minka Fitzpatrick is the 11th overall pick in that 2018 draft that we talked about with Mason Rudolph. So this kid's talented. He's he proven is. himself. He Great won player. it out of Miami, um, the sinking ship that is the Miami Dolphins. So, I mean, they got a young player. He's under contract for at least the next three years. So, a, still a young piece for that defense, but definitely a focal point going forward. So, I really don't hate it. There's some positive and negative opinions around Steeler Nation. Some people love it. Some people hate it for reasons that you've kind of brought up already. But they all are. in all, all in all, I like the move. I'm excited for the season still. Like you said, even with Ben being healthy, seeing what New England's doing, seeing Kansas City, like those are that's pretty much you can already book it that that's the AFC Championship this year in my opinion. Baltimore's definitely surprising a lot of people, so they're in the mix right now, I'd say as well. But other than that, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we saw what they did to Pittsburgh Week One. Like I really didn't have that many, that much um, hope after that game ended. So I mean, yeah, this could be a blessing in disguise. I'm a big fan of Mason Rudolph. I've been preaching it before he got drafted. So. I'm excited to watch him the rest of the season. Too. I have a lot of good young players to still be excited about for Pittsburgh, so I could definitely see them still winning some games this year. Yeah, I mean, the pick they traded could end up being top 10 pick in the draft, which mm -hmm. you never know what could have been with that pick. But. Yeah, and I mean, my my, my like win losses were like, you can look at it as if the pick's below an 11th overall pick, which is where Minka Fitzpatrick was taken mm -hmm. just a year ago, then it's maybe a loss. And oh, you could have drafted a very good caliber player, but say they go maybe like six and nine, like like eight and eight around that number, then that pick's going to be more in like the 15, like the 20 range. And then you maybe got a bet, got the better end of the deal with, if that's where the pick would have landed. So, and Fitzpatrick at this point, it's a known. He's not a bust. He's going to be a good player. Exactly. That top ten draft pick, it's a top ten pick, but you never know. So, mm -hmm. and Pittsburgh's good whiffed, thing. yeah, good Pittsburgh's, thing for the Pittsburgh's whiffed on some defensive talent in the first round in the especially past. in the secondary. Yeah, so I'm so I'm okay. I'm okay with the move for sure. I'm excited to watch the team this year, but I'm just going to do another transition here. So again, some pretty big quarterback injuries we've talked about, but. Um, some young quarterbacks kind of entering the spotlight here this week. So the big one being Daniel Jones. Um, Pat Shermer and the Giants have announced that Daniel Jones will be the starting quarterback in week three, most likely ending Eli Manning's official reign with the New York Giants. 
Um, another one being Josh Rosen. He's going to be promoted to the starter for the Miami Dolphins. Poor guy. Don't think that's going to make a difference whatsoever. He's not really had any luck with his um, start of his career in terms of his supporting cast, both in Arizona last year and Miami this year. So not going to touch on him too much, but I do want to get your opinions on Daniel Jones. Do you think he's going to be successful this year? I mean, the Giants still have a lot of holes on offense and defense, but he looked well in the preseason. So, I mean, do you think this was a good time to bring him in? To me, I think it was a little bit early, but I think the Giants are confident at this point that they have a good enough offense that offensive line no longer is awful. So I think they believe Daniel Jones will be able to stay upright, stay healthy. They don't want to throw their rookie out there and just have him killed. So I think the earlier the better, honestly, at this point, because Eli Manning is terrible. They shouldn't have even brought him back. So they made sure, which was smart, that the team is good enough. The offensive line will keep him on his feet. And now it's just time for Daniel Jones to do his thing. I think he's going to win some games for the Giants, something Eli, I don't know if he would have. Yeah. So they're at least going to win some games. Fans are going to be excited. I'm excited to see this rookie because of how great he looked in the preseason. And I think this is only a good thing for the Giants. Yeah, no, I think it's a good thing for the Giants and for the fans. I mean, we have a fan in the studio with us listening in. And, I mean, I know he's excited to watch Daniel Jones get some live action. So... So, yeah, we're, we're pretty excited for that. I mean, yeah, just as an NFL fan, I'm excited because I think Eli's held the franchise back for the last several years. So, um, so yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely time for a change. A little bit too late, in my opinion, but Daniel Jones is in, and I think he's going to be the guy I, the I rest like the of the time, way. actually, the more I think about it. Yeah, I mean, so you got Evan Ingram at tight end. I'd put him in a top five tight end category. Won't argue. Um, Sterling Shepard. He's going to be back this week. And then you have Golden Tate being off suspension in two weeks. So you have those guys on the offensive core. I think I don't think that's a bad, like, and, I mean, I'm running back, too, Saquon Barkley to dish the ball off, too. He's okay. Not a bad offensive core whatsoever. So, so yeah, is that all you got on Daniel? Yeah, not too much more to say about him. I'm just excited to see what he does. Yeah. All right, yeah, so we're going to take a quick break. We'll transition here real quick, and then we're going to start previewing some matchups for week three. So we'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're back. Like I said, we're going to transition here and start talking about some uh, week three matchups, preview the NFL week here coming up. So even though we're a little late this week, this is going live Friday night. We're still going to talk about the Thursday night matchup a little bit. There's some interesting topics there. So Jags Titans, Tennessee at Jacksonville for Thursday night football coming up tonight as we're recording this, actually. So not really the most enticing matchup, but some interesting topics nonetheless. Uh, Gardner Minshew II, the, the typical football guy, I call him the generic version of Baker Mayfield, is going to be at the helm this week at home for Jack for Jacksonville. Um, what do you what do you think of Gardner Minshew? I mean, there's like just the stories of him doing stretches and just a jock strap in the locker room. I saw something on Twitter where an XXX porn website wanted him to do some like workout videos and stuff <laughs> in the jock strap for their site. So very interesting. Um, I mean, what do you, what do you take? I mean, he had some pretty good it. college numbers. Like I watched some college I've highlights and everything. He's, I mean, I've never heard of him either. I mean, but I definitely recognize him. Like he has the mustache <laughs> going. That was a big like campaign for his college career. But um, I mean, what do you take? I mean, do you think he's going to light it up against Tennessee? The guy's hilarious. Like you just keep <laughs> seeing all these facts posted see, about him on the, Instagram. The outfit coming off the plane. He had like the chest hair popping out. The like, chest hair. His popping shirt out. wasn't even buttoned. I think he had like the bottom two buttons. buttons I saw so something that he pointless, he but. wasn't even an actual the second. Like he's just called the second. Yeah, yeah. His it, dad's not Gardner oh, Minshew the right. first. I gotta look up what his dad's name is because I saw that too. There's so many facts are coming. His grandpa wanted to name him Beowulf. That's that's the, what he was trying to name his kid. Naming my kid that. The jock strap stretch, and it's like the Jaguars can they not have a funny quarterback? I don't think it's possible. Like Blake Bortles departs, I talk about it every week, <laughs> and he's just straight up replaced by a guy that's better. His actual name, Gardner Minshew the second, with no original Gardner Minshew. <laughs> Minshew's father is named Flint. <laughs> so like, uh, like that literally just like yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be the second. Like, like not even junior because technically the second's <laughs> junior. You don't see any of the seconds. This would be Gardner Minshew junior, but he's like, nah, I'm just gonna be the second, and like, I'm just gonna act like I'm the second until people bring it up. They literally. Found so, Bortles 2.0. Yeah. I love it. And I think he's going to have a good game against the Titans. We saw him last week. Who they play? I forget, but he put together Houston. an amazing Houston. He put together an amazing they final were, drive. And then they had the ball to go the for touchdown. two to win the game. So could have won the yeah. game and he just barely missed it. The guy can run. He uses his legs. He's literally another coming to Blake Bortles. Like he runs all over the place. He can. Yeah. He makes throws sometimes. Other times he sucks. He's Bortles. He's got. A, <laughs> he's got a stash. Yeah. No. And I just can't wait to watch him against the Titans. Divisional matchup. Like I don't know why I didn't put that comparison together. Like maybe I was giving him a little more respect than Blake Bortles, but like literally, like I mean I. Out of the small sample size like mind you that we've seen like yeah 
he's put some good throws together, some good drives, but like he's also terrible at times as well. Like I love not it. even being close to accurate. But I mean seventy five percent chance I have a Minshew jersey by the end of the year. Yeah, I'm very I'm excited, but um so so what do you think? Like official pick, Titans? It's gonna have or to no, be Jags, Titans. Jags. It's gonna have to be Titans. Yeah. I'm just I'm too big of a Derrick Henry fan. I don't know. All right, so I think Derrick Henry's gonna transitioning take over. into the only other topic I want to talk about this game. Sorry, Tennessee Titans, but with the Jags, probably Jalen Ramsey's last game in Jacksonville. Um, pretty much requesting a trade once out of Jacksonville. Almost fought their head coach on the sideline last week. So I mean, there's really no going back from that. We saw what happened with Antonio Brown, pretty much fist fighting the GM and Mike Mayock in Oakland. So, what do you think, Chiefs? I'm just going to say it right now. You have to do what you have to do to get this guy. It's the equivalent of the Patriots gotta signing keep, yeah, Antonio you gotta Brown. you got to keep up with New England. It's literally the same too. exact thing. Yeah. Patriots, best team, sign one of the best players. They're great. You're the second best team. you got to make another addition yeah. to compete with the you Patriots, gotta, who clearly established themselves as the best team in the NFL yeah. I mean, after I said, adding AB. I said this off air. I mean, you can book it right now what the AFC Championship's going to be. Kansas City and New England right now are just competing and winning games to see who has home field advantage yeah. because that's that's going to be a big deciding factor if it it's is. in Kansas City or if it's in Foxborough come January. But, I mean, yeah, I like Kansas City. I've seen them in a lot of rumors. I'm booking it, though. I'm going to dis disagree with you if i'm booking it i'm putting money on it i think the oakland raiders are going to make a move jalen ramsey is the perfect personality to go to las vegas just um completely just rugged personality really doesn't take no take anything i mean he's going to get paid the raiders have the cap space to pay him next off season um the raiders have the capital as well it's interesting to see what they're actually going to give up for him but i'm booking it right now oakland raiders um, another honorable mention before you before you chime in, because I'm sure you probably have a comment with that, but I'll say the Eagles as well. Um, Doug Peters in the Eagles front office is no they're no strangers to making like bold moves. So if yeah. they gotta give up a first round pick and extra to get Jalen Ramsey and get them back into Super Bowl contention, their secondary is by far their biggest hurt right now. I mean, unless you count receivers who have a lot of injuries, but with Philly, their secondary is pretty brutal. Ronald Darby's not going to get the job done, so throw Jalen Ramsey in there, and you got you got an NFC contender for sure. I'm going to throw out my prediction here for Jalen Ramsey's next destination. You the Ravens. Kansas City. No, I say Kansas City has to, but I don't think that's where he's ultimately oh, okay. going to go. Right, I say right. Kansas City, you got to do it, but okay, fine. I don't think it's where he's going to end right. up. The Ravens are in the run in my team. There's like five teams that I've seen interested in him, and I, don't, I can guarantee he's not going to be a Raven. The Ravens are one of the most stingy franchises with draft picks. They're not going to give up a first yeah. plus for this guy, no matter how good he is, no matter how much they'll need him. Uh, with uh, Jimmy Smith going down, this cornerback is suddenly kind of a weak position for my Baltimore Ravens. I'm going to predict, this is kind of an out there prediction, San Fran 49ers are 2-0. Yeah, I didn't want to touch on like uh, like 10 different teams, but I've seen San Fran in some conversations as well. Kind of surprisingly, 2-0. Jimmy G is looking good. The defense is looking great. So imagine adding this guy across from Richard Sherman. I'm sure the 49ers would have no fear giving up picks, whatever mm -hmm. capital they need to get Jalen Ramsey. Yeah. And then having him across from Richard Sherman, they can seriously... That'd make be a, a run. Yeah, make a run I mean, this year. Richard win Sherman's, games, win Richard, the division. Richard Sherman's been quiet since leaving the Legion of Boom in Seattle, but I mean, he's still been he's he's been like a top corner in the league. I mean, he's he's had some rough games here and there for sure. Like, I'm not gonna say he's like up there with Jalen Ramsey in terms of overall skill right now, but Another. I mean, yeah, Ramsey would be be the easy number one, and then Sherman covering your number two guy. Like, he's gonna shut down any number two wide receiver in the league, in my opinion. So California team, they're competitive this year. That's what Jalen Ramsey says he wants. That's yeah. gonna be my pick for Jalen but really it could be anyone so either way we got him going to California so it's just whether or not it's Oakland or San Francisco that's what I'm booking it as like I said I threw some honorable men honorable mentions in there wouldn't surprise me if he goes to Philly or even San Francisco like you said I've seen some reports there too but I definitely say Oakland with possibility of Philly sprinkled in there too yeah I think Chiefs just with Antonio Brown like you got to neutralize gotta, that got to keep up I don't I, think it's gonna happen though I, I don't think so either, to be honest, but I agree. I mean, if you want to neutralize that move with New England, keep up. It wouldn't, be, wouldn't hurt for sure, but yeah, that's... sorry. So your official picks, the Titans, just to counteract you and throw some arguments in there. Give me Gardner, Gardner Minshew, 295 yards, three touchdown passes. That's what I'm going with. Whoa. Tonight, so. Started we'll him over Mahomes in the Heat of Sports <laughs> Fantasy League. <laughs> it's happening. Gardner, I think... Gardner Minshew is going to – he's not going to run Nick Foles out of town, but I, I hope he takes the league by storm and we see him somewhere else pretty soon. That's a hot take right there. I love it. But something that's kind of very realistic in my opinion, 
He's going to outplay Mariota. He's going to be the best quarterback on the field tonight. I don't like, think yeah, Mariota's... Mario, Mariota's terrible. He's back to being bad. I think Minshew... Mar he's going to shine in this Thursday night game. He's going to be he's gonna, what, what everyone's going to be talking about tomorrow. I think there's a good chance Mariota and Winston are the next Blake Bortles and, like for next offseason in terms of like top five draft picks just becoming backups in some like rec like basic franchise. Well, I shouldn't say the Rams are a basic franchise. That's where Bortles is now behind Goff. But you get the gist. I mean, yeah, they gotta two, go. number one They've and number two overall pick most likely could very easily be backups next year. Had so many opportunities. Bo both in contract years. I, if I had to put money on it, I'd say Winston over Mariota would maybe get a new contract with their team. But Mariota just does not look good whatsoever. I mean, and you can tell just by them signing Ryan Tannehill. Like, the Buccaneers are still committed to Winston. Mm -hmm. The Titans, when they signed and Tannehill Bruce to And Bruce Arians likes him a lot, too, I think. Bruce Arians, a very quarterback, offensive-minded head coach. He likes Winston so far. I'll say so far. We're only two weeks into the season. but I but agree. Yeah. Mariota will be the Lots first to go. All right, so enough of this garbage Thursday night matchup. Again, the game's already over, so you guys know which one of us is an idiot or which one of us actually knows what we're talking about. <laughs> so to get into some other games in week three that will not have happened by the time this goes live on Friday night, um, I'm going to get into the most interesting one. I like the Ravens at the Chiefs, probably the two most offensive powerhouses in the AFC. If you don't count New England, but I mean, New England's in that conversation too. But Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes, two big MVP candidates for the at, right now. Future young quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson shutting a lot of the haters out with his arm right now. So... As a Ravens fan, I mean, I'm not going to say are you worried because I'd have all the confidence in the world in my team right now if I'm a Baltimore fan, but going into Kansas City against Mahomes, I mean, what are, I mean, you got to be excited at least. Like, what are you thinking? Oh, man, as a Ravens fan, I'm still ecstatic. We're 2-0. Lamar Jackson is a top two MVP candidate. It's been two weeks. I don't care. I'm extremely hyped up. And this game, it's going to be a test. It's going to be, let's see if the Ravens are the real deal. They've blown out the Dolphins. They've beaten the the uh, Cardinals by putting up a lot of points. But this is going to be a real test. Can they keep up with the Kansas City offense? And I think they definitely will be able to. I don't think they're going to win, but they're for sure going to keep it close. Yeah. Their receivers, are their tight end specifically, like everyone's just playing really well. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. Lamar, I think, is going to have more of a throwing game. I don't think he's going to run a ton in this one. I think he's going to be more of a passer. But, yeah, it's disgraceful this game is at 1 p.m. It should be a 4 o'clock or 8 o'clock game, yeah, but I'll I'd enjoy say, it nevertheless. I'd say it should be Sunday night, but I actually like the Sunday night matchup, which we'll get into here next, actually. It's going so, to be a shootout. It's going to be yeah, high scoring. I'll say, so before we transition, you're taking the Chiefs? Yeah, I have yeah. to. I probably... Hmm, I don't know. Too good. He's the best. He's the best player I've ever watched play. Yeah, I'd probably take the Chiefs at home so as well. Good. I mean, I think the Raven, I think the Ravens' defense gets the nod a little bit, but I mean, yeah, if you're asking me which offense know. is better, I'm going with the Chiefs. Yeah, I don't know. Still a good matchup. Ravens nonetheless. got a better run game. Probably my top most anticipated matchup for me in Week One. Again, it's a shame it's at one o'clock. There's going to be a lot of other games I'm paying attention to, just because of the time slot. But I'll definitely be keeping a close eye there. Um, so yeah, I said we're going to transition to Sunday night. L.A. Rams in Cleveland against the Cleveland Browns. Um, Cleveland's one and one got blown out week one against the Titans then blew out the Jets in week two But I mean if we're being honest they didn't win that game by at least 20 points I think everybody would be trashing the Browns, but they beat the Jets pretty uh, pretty easily But they have the Rams coming to town. I mean, what do you what do you think there? I mean, do you like the Rams Todd Gurley still me as a fantasy owner of Todd Gurley still raising some questions But the Rams overall look pretty good so far Yeah, for me, it's gonna be all Rams. It's still week three a bit early for the Browns who still haven't really answered a lot of questions they've looked terrible week one they've looked good but against a bottom two team week two so we just don't know how this team is coming together yet we don't know if freddie kitchens is a legitimate coach versus probably the best coach in the league right now sean mcveigh the guy everyone's trying to copy so i think they're just simply going to get outplayed by the rams yeah. i don't think it's going to be that close I think Baker is going to not have the best game, and I think the Rams win this one pretty easily. Yeah, I mean, we saw what happened when, when Baker gets pressured. He struggles a little bit. He throws it around a little more than he should be. Tennessee gave Don't him a lot of— Don't the Rams have a good pass rusher? The, yeah, I mean, they have, like, Aaron Aaron, Aaron Donald. The Donald, I think, is his name. Like, he's, <laughs> he's won some awards, I think, but I can't, I can't put my finger on it. But I've, I've heard good things. Like, I've heard he's pretty good, so— so Trouble. that so that that guy if that guy Donald's back and healthy like it's, it's gonna be it might be a nightmare night for Baker Mayfield again with the spotlight now on Cleveland like this is Cleveland's year the preseason Super Bowl favorites right like Cleveland Browns it's it's gonna be panic mode at least the media's I think will rip them apart pretty good unless they at least make it a competitive game but 
I kind of agree with you. I don't think Baker's going to have a great game. I don't think the defense will be able to stop the Rams' offense. I think Gurley's going to come to his own. Again, Gurley's not injured. I just think his usage, I think they're kind of just like easing him in back to being the old Todd Gurley in terms of touches. But, yeah, I could see that offense. The wide receiving core is great. If Goff plays well, yeah, it could be it could be a multi, multi-possession multi win yeah. for the Rams. The I Rams, I don't think people are treating them like the Rams they were last year, mm-hmm. but they're 2-0. and They're winning games. Gurley's limited, but it doesn't matter because they're winning, and in the long run, it's going to pay off. So, yeah, the Rams are a top-five team in the NFL. They're going to be good. They're going to get pressure on Baker, and they're going to be 3-0. Yeah. So, I got one more matchup here I want to touch on before we get into our upsets of the week. So, Houston Texans at LA Chargers. It's a 425 matchup, division matchup. Or, I'm sorry, not division matchup, but AFC matchup nonetheless. Um, what do you what do you take in there? I mean, Houston, I don't know what to think of Houston because I think they impress a lot of people. Deshaun Watson and uh, DeAndre Hopkins look great on Monday Night Football Week 1 against the Saints, losing with that last second, like, 80-yard field goal that Will Lutz kicked to win the game. But then last year, or sorry, last week rather, they come one failed two-point conversion away from losing to the guy named Gardner Minshew the second. So, yeah, what do you think? It's actually a tough game because, like you said, we've seen two extremely different sides of the Texans. Chargers, too, are a team that I'm not really confident in anymore. And this, I'm, I'm going to have to go with the Texans just because of Deshaun Watson. Yeah. I think this guy is amazing. I think he'll be back to form this week as in putting in putting up more points they scored like 13 yeah. against the Jags I think they're scoring a lot more against the Chargers and Austin Eckler is looking amazing yeah not making a good case for Melvin Gordon right now yeah, yeah, it's NFL crazy. running backs that are holding out except for Zeke Elliott it's just it's not a good look and it usually doesn't work but Eckler's look great but I don't know I just don't think the Chargers are going to do enough to keep up with Deshaun Watson yeah and Carlos Hyde, like, people are kind of sleeping on Carlos Hyde. I think he's top five in a rushing yardage so far this year. He's getting yeah, it done in the running game for him Yeah, they've given him Miller's the, absence. They've given him the ball more than I expected. I still thought it was going to be Duke Johnson kind of leading the way, but it's more of like a 50-50 split so far. So I'm using Duke Johnson more in the passing game, obviously. But, but yeah, it's think, interesting. So I think Watson has a game. I think the Texans win this one. Yeah, I mean, the Chargers did not look good at all last week. They got upset by the Lions. I mean, the Lions offense did look pretty good, but a game that the I Lions thought the Chargers definitely should have won. So I'd probably take the Texans as that matchup as well. But, um, yeah, so let's get into the upsets of the week. So, real quick, kind of summing it up, uh, who do you got in the in your upset of the week here? I want to kind of do this as, like, a weekly thing. So, what do you what do you got this week? All right, you did just talk about them. It's the Lions, and it's not as much. Lions, I'm crazy over, about. Lions over Philly? Lions over the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles are a team people were calling the most deep roster in the NFL. We're hyping them up all offseason. They're still great. They're a good team. I think the Lions are going to steal one here just because the main reason is the Eagles are depleted right now, especially at the wide receiver position. And Wentz got battered last week, so he has no one to throw to. Yeah, I'm just scared for Wentz. I think the Lions are going to be able to put up some points because Stafford's actually looked really good. They are doing really well on offense. I think they sneak one out here against the Eagles, who a lot of people were picking as Super Bowl contenders at the start of the season, but they'll get the receivers back. Once we'll hopefully still be healthy to finish out the season, they'll they'll get things together. But right now they're gonna lose to the Lions. That's my prediction. Yeah, no, I mean I don't hate it. I mean I'll tell you right now, Philly fans, just watch out for Kenny Galladay because Matt Stafford loves the guy. He's been throwing to him a lot already this year. He has a touchdown in both games this season, and like we already kind of mentioned, Philly's secondary is pretty bad. So I mean I could definitely see Galladay lighting it up. They have other guys, Carry on Johnson at running back, say, yeah. who I he's fantasy wise I have him on my fantasy roster. He's been kind of disappointing a little bit, but they just cut C.J. Anderson recently, so I think that. I think Carry on's usage is only going to go up. Um, they have other guys, T.J. Hawkinson and Jesse James, two tight ends there that I like a lot. So um, I mean, yeah, I I don't really hate that upset pick. Like we kind of said off um, off off air, I kind of like that one as well. Just don't think he's going to be able to out throw Stafford, which is Zachary yeah. and Aguilar. No, I mean it's especially if he's if banged he does, up. It's extremely impressive. Yeah, I mean Wentz was banged up too last week, so we'll kind of have to see. I'll tell you just real quick for Philly fans, watch out for Dallas, man. Like Dallas is looking really impressive so far. Granted, Dallas hasn't had the strongest like opponents so far, but that defense looks strong. Dak's making his presence known and kind of earning that payday he's going to get. In our power rankings that are in the description, we have the Cowboys reaching that top five, Philly falling out of the top five after losing to Atlanta last week. 
But, um, I mean, yeah, Dallas is looking dangerous, but that's all I'll say with that. Kellen Moore looks like a genius. He does look like a genius and kind of just makes you question why, what is Jason Garrett doing for this team? Like, it kind of, I, I still feel like they're kind of babying um, Kellen Moore into being the new head coach in a year or two, mark my words. Really? Yes, 100%. I'd put money on that one. But I'm going to get into my upset of the week now. Not a clear upset, I don't think, but I'm taking it's the Raiders. I'm taking the Raiders over the Minnesota Vikings. Um, both teams are one and one, so that's kind of why I mentioned that. But I think there's a clear favorite in this matchup being Minnesota at home. But the Raiders are an interesting team. Derek Carr looked good week one against a good Denver defense, and it showed, and they won. They pounded the ball with Josh Jacobs, who I love. I've said that multiple times already. But um, but yeah, I mean Tyrell the Raiders. Williams too. Yeah, Terrell Williams is looking like a good wide receiver one, and Carr when Carr's on, he's throwing the ball to him. And tight end rookie tight end Darren Waller has been getting a lot of targets on that offense as well. And so I'll hype up the Raiders like I just did, but I'm also gonna kind of give my reasoning on why I, I hate the Vikings. And Kirk Cousins looks absolutely terrible. Like, we all knew their new game plan this year was to run the ball. And Dalvin Cook looks amazing. If, he's, if he stays healthy, he's going to be a top running back at the end of the season. But we all know that this is a passing league. And if you're down like they were down against the Packers last week, you can't come back by running the ball majority of the time. You have to put it in your quarterback's hands. And if they go down against the Raiders, Kirk Cousins is just not look like a guy that's going to be able to bring him back. So... I like the Raiders in this matchup. If Josh Jacobs is healthy, he kind of has a minor hip injury. Apparently, he's had a cold throughout the week. So, if Josh Jacobs is there, I like him a lot. I like the Raiders in that matchup this week. Yeah, definitely don't disagree with that. Kirk Cousins, like you said, 100 yards in week one, 230 in week two. He's just not doing a lot. He had two interceptions and a fumble that second week. So, he's definitely not doing much for that offense. They're really just relying on Dalvin Cook right now. And if you're down and losing by a score or two, the run game's not going to help you a ton there. Yeah, no, it's going to be rough. But um, that's really all I got to say. So I'm kind of just going to wrap up the show there. Both had our upsets picked. So make sure you guys check us out. A lot of links in the description. So our power rankings, we've been updating every week, like I mentioned. They're going to be in the description, as well as our Heated Sports website. We have articles going out every single week with a couple different writers on our team and our social medias. So Twitter and Instagram, we're pretty active on those, posting about all our different articles and some of our topics. So... Make sure you check those out. Give us a follow. Let us know how you think, how you like the episodes, and just let us know if you think we're crazy or not. Because we're all we're all for debating some football. So we'll be back here next week. So make sure you tune in and have a good rest of your week. See you later, guys.